The Dinosaur That Pooped the Bed, written by Tom Fletcher and Dougie Pointer, illustrated by Gary Parsons. Danny and Dino had nothing to do, so Danny said, Why don't we watch some cartoons? But then Danny's mum cast a shadow of gloom. You can't watch TV till you've tidied your room. They slumped up the stairs in the foulest of grumps, and they stood in their room at the foot of Mount Dump. Tidying this mess will take thousands of years, said Danny, whilst desperately holding back tears. Unless they were going to tidy forever, they needed a plan, a plan that was clever. And then an idea popped inside Danny's head. Why clean up this mess? You can eat it instead. So Dinosaur opened its mouth like a bin. Danny scooped up the mess and he threw it all in. Toys from the tip of the top of the heap were chucked in and chomped by Dinosaur's teeth. It chewed Danny's shoes. It could not get enough of Teddy's and Cuddly's stuff made of fluff. The dinosaur sucked like a humongous hoover, removing the mess like a room mess remover. Vest pants and socks and little toy soldiers. Danny laughed as he watched from the dinosaur's shoulders. His fluffy pet hamster, along with its cage, was swallowed up in dinosaur's mess munching rage. It smushed the seas, which, on reflection, were far from the greatest of record collections. So Dan didn't mind. It all had to go. If they wanted to kit back and watch TV shows. In Dinosaur's head, the bed was a burger, as diamonds would look to the greatest of burglars. In one dino bite, the bed disappeared, no mess left in sight. The whole room was cleared. Not one piece of rubbish was left to consume. At last we can finally watch some cartoons. But Dinosaur's tongue cast a shadow of doom. It was full to the brim with the mess of Dan's room. Dino was wedged in between the floor and the ceiling. It couldn't believe how full it was feeling. It started to worry. It started to panic. Never before had it been more gigantic. The dinosaur's bottom was bigger than Norway. So big and so fat, it was blocking the doorway. Then Dan started crying, his nose dripped with snot. They were stuck in their room, and the TV was not. With pillows and quilts in the dinosaur's gut, its brain didn't have full control of its butt. It knew that there wasn't anything it could do. One way or another, it needed to poo. The dinosaur pooped more than ever before. All the mess it had cleared was now back on the floor. Shoes, pants and teddies and soldiers and socks with smelly poo lumps filling Danny's toy box. Then Danny saw dinosaur's face turning red and knew the next thing to be pooped was the bed. It sprang from its bum with a bounce and a bump, right back to its place at the base of Mount Dump. Then Dino deflated and unblocked the door, where Mum was standing more cross than before. They looked at the mess all around where they stood, and they knew they'd been naughty, and naughty's not good. So they picked up their mops and mopped up the plops that covered the toys and the vest, pants and socks. If only they'd tidied their room as they should, they'd be watching TV, not wishing they could. So remember, next time you're in front of the telly, you can't watch cartoons if your bedroom is smelly.